Here's a quick crash course with Tony LaPrat on how bucks and does bed differently on small acreage or any acreage for that matter. I hope you guys enjoy this snippet from the Exodus podcast. Here we go. When I was trapping all the time, I would jump these big bucks all the time. And so I said, you know, I don't think my farm, they don't even bet on here. So I started looking, and I couldn't find no place where deer were laying down. So I went on my trap line, started finding where all the deer bed, and I was just this guy that didn't care what people thought. I got down into the beds where they are, and I wanted to see how they looked and what they seen. Most of the time, they can't see three feet in any direction. In Michigan, they're in cattails. When they lay down, they can't see nothing. Most of the time, there's something over their head. A tree's lean, and it fell down, and they crawl underneath it. So I started looking at that, and I go back to my farm. You could look two, 300 yards in every direction. I said, I have none of this. So I'm just standing there a long time ago, and I happened to lean on a maple tree. I never even told anybody this before. I'm leaning on this little dinky maple that's a couple inches in diameter, and I look up, and I go, 20 Five feet up and 20 feet up, there's cover like crazy. Down on the bottom, there ain't nothing. I said, I wish all that thickness was down here. And I grabbed that tree and it moved a little bit. And I just reached over and grabbed it and I took and pulled it down till I had it about waist high. And I'm looking around and I'm going, man, if I went in here and got all these trees pulled down, it changed the whole look of this land. That's how it started. And then once I figured out deer beds and bucks and does are different, how they lay, does bed for convenience. So if you got food, the girls are going to take over the first thick spot in your woods because they don't want to take and make the fawns travel any farther than they have to. The bucks, they don't care how far they travel for food, water, and girls. They only bed where they feel safe. And what the biggest issue is, is a buck spends 70% of his life on his belly out of the remaining 30%, 20% will be in his core area. So when a buck beds on your property, you're where he spends 90% of his daylight time. And if you, he lives across the road, you ain't ever going to see him more than 10% of your life. Well, what the other thing is, and this is the thing that will help a lot of people, is a lot of guys will pass up year and a half and two and a half and even three and a halfs. And then they never get a stockpile of these great big bucks that are four and five and a half. And what they haven't figured out, and, and this was me studying deer, them deer, when they're a year and a half and two and a half, will bed in bedding areas that are marginal. But as they get older, they look at your woods and it's too open. Your food plots are too big. You have too many straight lines going through your property. They got to cross. And blinds are not concealed. As they get older, they start learning what danger is. And this buck at three and a half looks around and goes, I ain't staying here. And he's loyal to nothing but habitat. And you've been passing these bucks for three years, and now they move down the road five to eight miles. And some guy that ain't even doing anything, he just happens to have a thick woods and stuff. He keeps getting these nice bucks and don't understand where they're even coming from. Yeah. And someone else has produced them. So what you got to ask yourself, if you're passing up all these bucks and you ain't getting a stockpile, then you better be looking at your setup because what it is is you don't have beds that are set up for a mature buck. So another good way to explain it, if you have a bed in a river, horseshoe shape, the buck will always bed on the inside corner. He will never bed on the outside corner. The inside corner, he puts his back to the water. Coyotes, dogs, man, all predators will usually come from the land side. So now he can cross the creek, go out the back door. You, he can go left, right. And if you come across the water, any predator, he shoots right out the land side. They never bed on the outside curve because now it's just the opposite. They can't see. He made blind sides to him for how the predator can enter. When he's on the inside corner, everything is perfect. So I walked over 2,400 properties. Once I started figuring out things, every day I'm in a classroom. I'm learning from everybody else's property and verifying what I know. So now I'm always telling people, right up here, we'll find some beds. And they look at me and I've never been on their land. I said, they'll be over here. And I'll go, yeah, right over here, we should sign a group of bedding areas. They should be pretty close together, semi-circle. There'll be a doe group. And they're amazed that I can do it. And I go, guys, I've walked the woods every day. If I can't tell you what's ahead, I need to get a different job. 